in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. You see, let me teach you something. We're going to teach it in the Bible school. It's called homiletics. That's the theological name. The art of preaching. Repent from this jargon kind of preaching that people do. No, 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 And people are nodding. You are not getting anything. At the end of it, what did you get? You are not being changed. If that's how your lecturer teaches you, I assure you, you will never graduate. See, the goal of teaching, I'm not preaching. Are you listening to me? To preach means to declare. To teach means to explain. There is a difference. Preaching gives you knowledge. Teaching gives you understanding. The word of God is taught. The gospel is preached. So, for many of you who just go, nah, 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 nah. you're just rapping and ranting. Uh -uh, calm down are the people following if you leave the people more confused you ended up wasting their time and their destinies hallelujah that's why i'm taking it slowly because i really want you to get this have you written the first word so what does it mean ordinary of moderate quality write down the second word indifference indifference Those of you outside, the Lord will bless you. I'm seeing you from here and I'm telling you, my, see, I look forward to a big auditorium, mighty auditorium, where there will be light everywhere. And those of you who are doubting will not be there. Oh yes, that's what they told, that's what he told. He said you will see it, but you eat of it. When Prof was saying, ah, one of the best institutes, some of you are saying, ah, Really? It's not your fault, you're a student. When we are done with you, we'll kick out that mindset in Jesus' name. So write quickly, indifference. It means lack of interest. Please take note of that word. We'll be discussing it seriously today. Lack of interest. Number two, it means lack of concern. Lack of sympathy. Lack of interest lack of concern lack of sympathy another word nonchalance i mean another definition of indifference nonchalance nonchalance it's what nigerians call i don't care attitude don't write that don't write that you're a leader don't write that i'm just helping you understand say i'm a leader say it i'm a leader indifference the third word excellence write down this word excellence what does it mean the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of having superior merit to be of superior merit being exceptional surpassing ordinary standards i like that surpassing ordinary standards that's what it means to be excellent surpassing ordinary standards being extraordinary in other words above the ordinary possessing 
the highest or finest quality excellence write down the last word change C H A N G E change it means to transform or to convert change change means to transform it means to convert it means to become different or to undergo an alteration change means to become different or undergo an alteration to be altered thank you jesus hallelujah now our discussion tonight is going to be around these four words and please i pray with all my heart and i'm still praying to god as i'm standing here that within these few minutes i will wrestle something in your mind and shake out anything that is not of god and if you believe that say amen, amen. hallelujah i'm teaching tonight on dominion through excellence dominion through excellence dominion through excellence the greatest enemy that I've found in my life and from the word of God the greatest enemy of excellence is an attitude of indifference the greatest hindrance the greatest enemy to a life of excellence is indifference hallelujah and now look up please everybody now you can look up let me teach you why when you examine the body of christ you find out that we covered a bit of that in our full gospel series you can get the teachings very important but you find out that in the body of christ there is an emphasis on what i want to call the spiritual side of life hallelujah every sunday you just stand on the road and you see people moving from place to place ask them where am i going to say church say for what say to worship what does that mean i don't know and they are moving and so you have people who are moving from one place to the other and suddenly when two people are gisting when they step into church they stop talking they assume uh what do we call it now an attitude a sacred attitude and they sit down and now the pastor sits down and just discusses and then just gets up and changes his form and comes up and begins to preach and talk and everybody just sits down and behaves himself then we end the service by sharing the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god be with us now and forevermore amen and everybody resumes to what they want to call what their normal lives hallelujah and now the tragedy that has happened in the body of christ is that we have taught because of certain revelations like the favor of god the sovereignty of god the mercy of god um destiny help us you know powerful teachings like this we have had a lot of emphasis on these teachings and it has really not helped the body in some measures because it has brought people to a point where certain things like competence certain things like excellence certain things like diligence certain things like determination certain things like knowledge study um, hard work and so on and so forth is no longer respected hallelujah why should i be diligent when overnight god can give me houses i did not build hallelujah why should i be diligent when i can just sit down and i can't speak english but then i can find myself in, in the television ministry and i can heal the sick hallelujah why should i be excellent and you know the sad thing is this let me tell you where that error came from 
Many men of God left everything to go into a genuine pursuit for God. Are you listening to me? They cut themselves away from society. The Bible says through desire, Proverbs 18 verse 1, a man having separated himself, he said he intermeddled with all wisdom. And so in the course of the sacrifice to get the anointing, you hear people talk of 100 days of prayer and fasting, one year, two years, ten years, like Paul in the wilderness of Arabia, and so on and so forth. Now, when ministers get the anointing, listen to me, and then they also have character. When they come up, they find out that, ah, uh -uh, you know, people are coming, there are crowds coming, because people have needs. And if you can meet that need, you become a magnet. People will keep coming. Hallelujah. They can criticize you, but they will still come. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? But then, that's not the issue. The major issue is that when that begins to happen, now the man of God begins to talk and he tells the people, I didn't read any book. I didn't study anything. I didn't learn anything. All I did was what? I pursued God and I prayed. And out of that, I built an excellent ministry. Correct? Now, that's not wrong because that's how he came. But then, the danger is if he does not contend for higher knowledge in the realm of the spirit, he will begin to model a portrait of how he got to the position he was and begin to teach people. Are you listening to me? He begins to tell people, look, all these books, they are jargons. Just forget about it. And now you have a church that is anointed excellent man of God but he's a bad leader are you listening to me wonderful person but you find out that there are all kinds of cases they don't know who keeps the offering in the church the pastor collects 100,000 offering he kept it in his drawer later he came and found 10,000 he said who carried it Because he does not know that there are principles of corporate financing, for instance. And he doesn't see the need for it. Are you listening to me? Now, he knows that people are coming. But he forgets that the people are human beings. Only because they want the anointing so they can stand. He said, let, let them keep standing. If they really want to be blessed. After all, in the days of Ketrin Kuman, people waited from this to this. So, certain principles, listen to me, that can prepare us to contend with our society and the 21st century is not taught and built in people. Are you listening to me? And people have been taught that when you follow certain principles of life and success and achievement and the rest, it is you are reducing your spiritual journey. So they tell people, forget it. All that is there is fast and pray. I assure you, once you can kick away Satan, your destiny will open. Now the people go through every deliverance. They pray in tongues for years and they find out that this equation is not adding up. Are you listening to me? And tonight I want to help us that there is an aspect of dominion that can only happen through excellence. Praise the Lord. Dominion through excellence. Jesus gave us a command. What we call the great commission. Unfortunately, the message of the Great Commission, even by many evangelists, have been misunderstood. Because Jesus gave us a commandment. He said, go ye into all the world. You can get our teaching, Conquering Cosmos. The word there is cosmos. The word there is not just two people sitting down who are drinking. Go into all the social system, the strata and the sphere of society. I told you that the gospel is not just a message. The gospel is a value system. Are you listening to me? The gospel is not just a message. It's an ideology. It's a value system that seeks to enthrone Jesus and his principles and his culture first in your life and across every sphere of influence. Are you understanding me? This is the gospel Jesus left. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he affected people and society. The reason why our gospel is powerless is because number one, we do not understand the Great Commission. Number two, we do not understand the components that make the Great Commission work. Number three, we, we are not interested to pay the price 
and make sure that we have those components working in our lives. Say amen. So there is a place for anointing. There is a place for prayer. There is a place for fasting. There is a place for knowledge. There is a place for wisdom. There is a place for excellence. There is a place for character. See, the truths in the Bible were not supposed to substitute one another. They were supposed to complement one another. When you begin to substitute one truth with another, you are going to land into error. The truth of God's word, where if it is in the Bible, it was not meant to substitute another. It was meant to complement. Hallelujah. So we have a society that cannot match the challenges that come. And the, the terrible thing about it, listen to me, listen to me, is that many of our mentors and our fathers and our leaders and our role models have not created a true picture of leadership. They have only created a true picture of pastoral ministry. Are you listening to me? So you see someone who God is calling into the area of business behaving like a pastor. Because that's all he has seen and learned. Are you listening to me? And we tell people that progress in the spirit is when you become a pastor. Wrong. Wrong. God's idea was not to raise pastors. I hope you understand that the fivefold ministry was not God's original agenda. It came as a result of the fall of man. So he had to give gifts to men. Ephesians 4 from verse 10 to 12. The Bible says when he led captivity captive, he gave gifts to men. Some first apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors. And they have an assignment for the equipping of the saints. That they the saints will come to a point of maturity and do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? The great commission invade cosmos with the value system of heaven there are many christians who are born again but they have not been taught that the message that jesus brought was not a religious message he came with an ideology he came with a value system that means if you embrace jesus and his message and his principles you should become something hallelujah predictable Unfortunately, what we teach in church is potent enough to raise people from wheelchairs, but not potent enough to produce leaders and produce champions and world changers, men and women who can take charge of society. So we have the church there healing the sick and raising people from crutches. Wonderful. But go to every office. You see unbelievers there. In the Senate, unbelievers there. And believers are suffering and the kingdom is not truly advancing motion without progress hallelujah and every time all we know to do is oh satan satan is behind your life if you can get this devil i promise you everything in your life will change i beg to defer that that is not completely true we preach we set people free here but let me tell you the truth sometimes many people call and say ah but they prayed for me and I don't feel those demonic influences, but my life has not moved forward. Because you see, it, success is a component of many factors. Impartation is only one of the components. Success is an equation with many variables that equal success. These things have not been taught in church. I told you to write four words, we are going to discuss them. The most dangerous of all of them is that word called indifference you know what indifference is look up please you know what indifference is indifference is a state of lack of interest and non-challenge there are many people who hear this message right now and just shut down say this kind of thing i thought we were going to talk on the seven planes of entering the seven dimension in the realm of the spirit hold on hold on Because the first shock I need you to know is that those who God is sending you to are not born again. Are you listening to me? They don't speak in tongues. They don't know the Holy Spirit. They do not respect the value system of the kingdom. 
And so your first interaction with cosmos will not be your praying tongues. Your first interaction will be the spirit of excellence. Write this because I want to challenge you tonight. I really want to challenge you. Indifference. I don't care. There are many believers who do not see a need. There's no pressure to upgrade their lives, to move from where they are to where God wants them to be. Indifference. The greatest killer. We preach about lust. We preach about fornication. We preach about all of these things. Wonderful. These things are bad. But let me tell you, we must also preach about all these other things like indifference. Do you know that when Jesus challenged the Laodicean church in Revelations, one of his challenge towards them was indifference. He said, you are neither, was it the Laodicean church? One of the seven churches. He said, you are neither what? Hot nor... How can a man be neither hot nor cold? So you are standing neutral. That state of being neither hot nor cold does not mount pressure in your spirit. You are not extreme in anything. Hallelujah. So if people criticize this side, you can identify with them. If they criticize this side, you can identify with them. And that's the most comfortable position in life. Mediocrity. Indifference. Many of us are here. And when you hear messages like this, you just sit down and be wondering, is he really talking about me or some other people? Indifference. It has killed the church. We have no voice. Hallelujah. There are many people today, listen to me, who are unemployed in Nigeria, not because of Satan, because they do not understand the principles that will get them from where they are into a great place. I tell you the truth. Many people are not honest because in Nigeria, we love transferring responsibilities. It was not my fault. My stupid father took me to a herbalist. Look at where I am now. What did he do about it? Nothing. So we love it when we transfer responsibility and blame. Hallelujah. We love it when we spiritualize everything and cover for any lapse on our own part. Praise God. This is very, very important. And I get very irritated when I see people not teaching the body of Christ all of the principles that are supposed to equip them. The Bible says that the house is a come and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he took me and showed me a city and heavenly Jerusalem. He said it lieth four square. The length, the breadth, and the height were equal. In other words, there are many components that make a complete Christian. And a good preacher and a good leader must be able to expose all the people to all of those components so that there will be a holistic building you don't just have prayer warriors who are broke failures in life or anoint or prosperous people who are victims of satan or anointed people who are bad fathers bad mothers You change a mind. You change a man by changing his value systems. His mindset. Hallelujah. That's why wicked men like Adolf Hitler and all these great men, they not only killed people, they sought to introduce new value systems. That's what they call brainwashing. You know what brainwashing is? They give you a new value system that can make you look at your blood mother who gave birth to you and you have another value system that, is, that does not even have respect for her value system. And many of you may not realize we are there clapping and throwing people under the anointing in church and Satan is infiltrating everywhere with a value system. Hallelujah. Gradually, they are kicking anything that looks like God out of schools, out of everything. Are you aware of that? Let me tell you the truth. Those who wanted to do that 
had that agenda since but they knew that some of them needed to become authorities in their field so that they can gain the required influence to carry out that wicked agenda and for decades they paid the price with that singular vision are you listening to me what you see happening to the world today was a decision that people set and they paid the price for years not in the body of christ We just teach people that you get born again, receive the impartation and go. In China today, China has a dream of becoming the world's superpower. And let me tell you something, the only person who can stop them is God. Are you listening to me? You go and read the history of China. And they came with certain leaders. And the leaders began to put a new value system in the people. They looked at their statistics and knew that the way Chinese people were giving birth anyhow very soon the country was going to have a problem and they began to come up with measures of birth control using flamboyant advertisement that changed the mindset of people and attracting a lot of people giving them a lot of things hallelujah and then they started encouraging industrialization among their people are you listening to me they started letting them see how much a Chinese product is better than any other product in the world. And listen, they drafted strategies to put that mindset even in a little Chinese boy. A little Chinese person, although he cannot speak English, he has self-confidence more than a lot of people. A system. Hallelujah. And right now, China produces a lot of things. Many Nigerians run. And produce inferior goods and run back into the country because of a country that can believe themselves and the last time i checked forbes list of most influential men president obama was not number one because certain people have an agenda and they are pressing towards it but when you come to the church if we listen, listen to me, Christians. A great man called Matthew Ashimo Lowo, KICC, when he went to London, he found out that although we were colonized by the British, he saw that there was still that element of racism in the place. And the blacks, a lot of people, some run from Lagos, follow through bridge, follow through everywhere, not by plano. They get to London through all kinds of ways and they survive there. They catch them, they jail them for six months. After six months, they bring them and they are roaming on the street. And he looked at these people and saw a depraved people that did not believe in themselves. And he says, I will change these people. And he set up his ministry and brought them. He began to teach them certain principles. After a few years, over seven, right now as I speak to you, over 60 to 70 percent of the people in his church own conglomerates and a lot of things the moment that happened the british government started noticing him because they started commanding influence they own the companies they own the banks they own the media and so you cannot have this kind of influence and not meet with the leaders and the kings that influence the minds of the people are you listening to me systemic invasion not just i receive i receive train people teach them give them the mindset build them i guarantee you you will fire them like the foxes that samson set on fire and left them the bible did not say he came to supervise them he just set the foxes on fire two by two and released them and the bible says they devoured the farm of the philistines Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Dominion through excellence. Lots of people do not, we don't care about excellence. It's not your fault. You were not taught. We the leaders who God has anointed have been there trying to look for money, trying to look for fame, trying to look for power, trying to go on air, trying to bring ridiculous projects that God did not send us to do. And we will not concentrate. He said, who are these? He said, what is this that you see? He said, four horns. He said, these horns have risen to judge Judah. He said, but I will send carpenters. Carpenters. Carpenters.
carpenters. What is the work of a carpenter? To construct. So God sends us as carpenters. And we begin to train men who will judge these horns. The Bible says in Obadiah 21, it says, And saviors shall arise out of Zion and shall judge the Mount of Esau. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If all you keep getting every week in Koinonia is falling on the floor or hands lay, being laid on you, I assure you, you will hate me in the next 10 years because you will see men who didn't pray like you, who didn't fast like you, but you are now moving around with CVs, praying in tongues for jobs in their own companies. Are you listening to me? That's what we have in church. So a lot of believers are confused. They cannot understand why a man who does not love God, sleeping with ladies all around, but he's the one who owns Virgin Atlantic. I didn't say that, oh, it's an example. Before you, you go and write on newspaper that Joshua Selman said, this. no, 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 example. Hallelujah. Or you find out that every believer, we are just praying, praying, and somebody says, hallelujah. The Lord showed me that soon we'll have a TV ministry. And the man claps. He says, am I not a prophet? Shame on him. What of the owner of the TV ministry? Who can kick your program out at any time? Why not train people and teach them the principles? Challenge and inspire people. Release an anointing and release knowledge and understanding in them. Let somebody rise and own a television station. Let somebody rise and, and put a software that before it works, it must say a scripture. You must listen to it. You should know me by now. As you are clapping, I hope you are getting it. Hallelujah. Now, every time we say this thing, people just say, whoa. But I, indifference. After people say, they just say, Kai, this message was very nice. What are you doing about it? Hallelujah. I don't see limits in my life. I, I'm telling you. See, this is my mindset. I don't see limits. You never, never will come and find me putting my hand like this. And you say, why? I say, Kai, I'm thinking of, I'm always optimistic. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. I'm persuaded. Look at lots of graduates in Nigeria. They love God. They were presidents of fellowships. But they were only taught the side of the anointing. Now, they go for a job interview. There's nobody to lay hands on. And they have to queue. A long queue. They were not taught principles. How to, how to do a lot of things. They have no character. They, have, they don't understand the principles. There are many people who, are, who get jobs. And for years, they are not promoted. And they get angry. Because they lack the necessary knowledge to leave the stage where they are and go beyond. And they think the remedy is just prayer. And they keep praying, praying. And God leads them to a book and they look. They say, no, no. This guy, I know him. He's, he's, not, he's not a fiery person. Let me ask you a question. How has your life been so far? Is there anything that inspires you? There are names that when you call, you call names that are very nice. Look at the sound that we are using. Because of this mic, many people have gotten healed. Many people have gotten blessed. The media is streaming right now. There's Facebook and Twitter. This was somebody who believed himself enough to get up and take influence. Excellence at all times. See, the spirit of excellence is not about money. This is what I want you to get. A lot of people have given excuses as to why their lives are the way they are. They say, if only I had more money. Koinonia, say you are rich. That's why you can do everything. It's a spirit. It's a culture. It's an attitude. Excellence is not just about money. It's about a spirit. I know many millionaire ministers who are not excellent at all. They are anointed they are filled with the Holy Ghost. They are not excellent. 
the quality of being outstanding the quality of being thorough write it thorough many people are not thorough in their lives you are studying a principle you are not thorough we like stopping halfway 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 we don't ask the right questions we don't pay the price to stay long enough we are always in a hurry no thoroughness that's the result lack of excellence someone wants to learn keyboard he just learned something small you start roaming around and telling everybody i can play the fact that they are not attending to you is a message get angry and go back let me tell you something excellence defies religion it defies gender it defies race and ethnicity you meet an excellent man he will break any barrier in life i was listening to a speech by one brilliant lady nigerian lady hallelujah on kicc and i think she's one of the editors of these great magazines and when she was speaking I could I, I sat down and I felt like a child I said Lord I need to rise beyond this level I am I am where I am today because of the degree of value I've placed on excellence if I step higher I will rise higher than this there are many preachers and you know let me tell you the thing about results and excellence every time you keep nonchalance and you don't move forward and someone else is moving forward you will be angry when i drive a golf and i bring here there are many of you who will see you are happy because it's consoling your present position but if i step in here with a lincoln navigator people will start talking some of you say ah me this kind of shady success i'm not sure we always want people to do things that keep us comfortable the moment they begin to do things that challenge you, you try to find excuses. See, it's not every power you see that you look at, oh, forget about these people. Let me tell you something about my life. And I say this with all humility. I pray, I fast, but let me give you a bit of my personal life. Listen, every single day, every single day, I do not sleep until I take out time to study on leadership on finance on entrepreneurship are you listening to me many people just think i'm just standing and god anointed me get the anointing and go are you listening to me i don't do that in my laptop right now i have christ embassy pastoral course the whole series this is not even something that is given anyhow i made sure i got it i'm listening to it Oga Jordan brought certain books. I ordered it right now. There are four books that I have and I must read at least between now and the next two weeks. Be the Best by Matthew Ashimolo. 10 M's of Money by Matthew Ashimolo. Pastoring Without Tears by Sondia Delaja and the Jesus He Never Knew. These were new books. When he brought John Maxwell's Five Levels of Leadership, I saw it, I bought it. What are you doing to leave the level you are in now and rise to become a world champion? Many of you are waiting. The day my brother rises, he will remember me. And then you'll be angry because your brother will forget you when he gets there. Say this brother, self. What is the benefit of an elder brother? Is it not to take some of us? Don't start doing something about your life. We are always waiting for somebody to pick us. When will you start carrying others? Every day. Are you listening to me? In my system right now, I was given Global Leadership Summit for last year, 2012. I have it. And I've been listening to it. Some of the brilliant Christian minds in leadership across the whole world. When I listened to the first one, I put my hand on my head. I got down on my knees. I felt ashamed of myself. I said, Joshua Selma, what have you been doing? I'm sure many of you are surprised now. That's how... That's how you'll be surprised. Me too, I'll be surprised. Them too, they are surprised when they listen to somebody else. Join the flow. Don't stand outside and be criticizing and talking. Because very soon, all you will see is dust by champions who have passed you. Are you listening to me? 
What do you think preaching is? Just standing to talk? Do you understand that for you to be a good preacher, there are some things you need to have? The psychology of communication? You need to know a lot of things? What do you think preaching is? Just holding a mic, take. And you watch the way people will be sleeping the moment you are talking. Say after me, excellence. Very important. I need you to get this. When God told us we're starting Koinonia, we didn't just sit down while we're praying and we're fasting. What happened? We set up different departments and began to run trainings for different people. Most of the people you see today, they were not like that. A true leader does not maintain followers. He raises other leaders. We have a lot of preachers maintaining followers so that they alone will become the superstar because they are intimidated. They need to go and read books and attend courses and trainings. But they won't do it because they've surrounded themselves with mediocres that keep lying to them. Your greatest enemy is the one who encourages you to remain where you are. I don't care who that person is. My father told me something years ago. He said it's better to stay with a wise enemy than a foolish friend. Your friend loves you the way you are. He won't hurt you because he values your relationship. But your enemy will cause you to have to be smarter than him to survive. I refuse to remain where I am. I refuse. There are things I do all the time. Let me hurry up. I have so much, I have so much to share. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following, right? To achieve excellence in life, I will not be small in the name of Jesus Christ. I have found my way out of mediocrity in life. I'm telling you, I found my way. I know it. I've seen the door. I found my way out of average. I found myself out of mediocrity. No competition. I found my way to be the best and be the greatest in life. This is not pride. This is the truth. This is what knowledge does to you. Intimidation is because you do not know your way out. For when you know what you have and when you see that door that has been set before you, you will rise up like a champion. Oh, I'll never be a failure. This is not a confession. It's the truth. I found my way out of certain things forever. Satan notwithstanding, I will live my life as if Satan does not exist. There are some battles. I wrote a, I read a beautiful book, a gift that Dr. John Akbami gave me. Battles Satan cannot win. Powerful book. There are some battles that Satan has lost before he started. I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, Koinonia will keep rising. No, no. It's, no, this is not the issue of amen. The grace of God is there. And there are principles that have been tested through centuries and decades before Lord Lugard amalgamated Nigeria. It has worked. It won't break. They are irrefutable principles. This is not just the issue of prayer. So long as human beings have two legs and two hands, it will work. Kappa katabala. Thank you, Jesus. This is why I celebrate him all the time. You can stand tall through life. And you just look at people and say, just hold on. This is just a matter of time. I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence. In 2007, I was in Port Harcourt. I was taking care of someone in the house where I was staying in the hospital. UST, the highest floor. I was there. Suddenly, I looked outside through the mirror. And I was taken in a vision. And I saw the international headquarters of ENI. I opened my mouth. 
I said, is this on earth? I saw 38 flags, different nations of the world. But listen, I would have easily laid down and say, I saw it. I tell you the truth, I would have died without seeing it. Many of you have seen many things from the day you were born. How old are you now? Almost 40. Nothing has changed. Every time you are stuck in life, realize that it's a sign that what you know so far has ex is exhausted. Hallelujah. Dr. Lukoya said something one time I was listening and he said something very powerful. He said, that's what Prof said. He said, you need a level of knowledge higher than you were when the problem came to conquer it. Are you listening to me? In other words, if you are in level 8 and you find a problem in level 8, you need knowledge higher than level 8 to ever go in life. There are many people who, members, they get to 100 members and they find out that with all the prayer and fasting, they don't break that 100 member barrier. They remain there. So they just say, that's how God wants it. Or forget to, anytime you see crowd anywhere, look at the man, look at his eyes very well. Only God knows what has happened. R immediately he's talking. Somebody will come with an anointing and set up something close to him. And you will see the same people who he has been trying and begging. See, brothers and sisters, anytime you are stuck in life, don't waste your time criticizing those going ahead. Your criticism will not stop them. Join the train and get out of your present predicaments. Hallelujah. Say, I'll never be a failure in life. Say, I'll never be small. Say it. Stop all this false humility. Say it. I refuse to be small in life. I'm telling you. I'm speaking to your spirit. Refuse it. Commit yourself to excellence. Be thorough. Be thorough. Be thorough. Don't leave your life to chance. Be thorough. What gift has God given you? The Bible says, Proverbs 31, verse 31. It says, many daughters have done well. But you, your excellence has brought you above them. He said, many daughters have done well. Many bankers have done well. Many media giants have done well. Many preachers have done well. Many businessmen have done well. He said, but you, excellence them all. See, let me tell you the truth. What you see in Koinonia today was my mindset of yesterday. You wait and see my mindset of today. What you are seeing today is not our mindset of today. This is old wine. I tell you the truth. This is old wine. This was the mindset we were preparing for when we were at the back of chapel. You hold on and see. For there, Let me tell you, God is alert and active watching over his word. He's watching obedient people. When God announced to us that this is a year of supernatural exploit, I knew that it's not enough to just say, thank you, Lord. I began to say, Lord, what are the things I need? It means I need a higher level of information. Oh boy, I wish I had time. All right, very quickly. I really wish I had time. But so, let's just get something. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following. Please make sure you are writing. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number one. When God wants to bring you into a life of excellence, the first thing you need is exposure. Right, exposure. Exposure. Let me tell you something about the power of exposure. Look up. If you are not exposed to something higher than what your mind knows, your mind can paint the portrait of a world of mediocrity and leave you there. Hallelujah. I was in secondary school. Our secondary school is not like your own. The one you went to. Where you ate yam and chicken. I never ate chicken in secondary school. Just one, Hanagama. I never ate chicken. Hallelujah. Not once. But, listen, but we were local champions around our local government. 
I mean, if we came to do debate with your school, you are, you are gone. Just start crying. Hallelujah. We had a debate with Jake's school. We came and came them those times. Ah, it was a delightsome experience. Ladies looked at us. Their ladies were winning those times. But we remained at that level until we met another school. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. God will expose you to something. Listen. Exposure, those three, those three things. Number one, the power of exposure. One, it takes you beyond your present horizon. It shows you that there is something higher than what you have seen. Exposure challenges you. Exposure provokes you. Sometimes, exposure embarrasses you. And these are all tools that God uses to show you that there is a need to step up in life. Hallelujah. Exposure. For instance, you never knew. There's one song. Um, ah, I didn't know you will answer me this way. Hold on. That's a lovely song. I said that to say this. That I just remember the story. I went for administration some years ago and we're just trusting God. It was an awesome opportunity to get to, even if it's 10 people. And it was wonderful. And I went there and the people treated me so well. And then there, it was a youth meeting then, but their, their prophet or their bishop or something, he said he wanted to have dinner with me. So you know in my mind, what is dinner? What is dinner? What have you been eating as dinner? Two or something or this and that and that. So I went. Was smart. When I got there and I, I saw what was there, I, I first didn't know what to do. Because I wanted to behave myself. I preached a powerful message. I didn't want to just disgrace and cancel everything. that I was looking for everything that can keep up my reputation at that point. So I sat down. And I saw things I didn't know what they were. I saw a pack. I didn't know it was milk inside. You, we only know milk in tin. Correct? You are laughing. Which one have you seen? So I didn't know it was liquid milk inside. And I behaved myself. I already made up my mind to be humble. So I was ready to ask questions. I had learned more than what you don't know. Just ask. Don't try to disgrace yourself the more. Ask. So I sat down and uh, I diplomatically cracked a joke and we started talking. And then I sat down there and I knew that I didn't know this thing. So I assumed that I was, the only thing I could do was to just behave like I was in the spirit. You know, they won't ask you too many questions. So I was behaving. And I was watching what they were doing. I learned numerous lessons when I was watching. I was seeing everything. I would have fumbled, disgraced myself, disgraced ENI, left a bad reputation. When I saw that thing, what happened? Say after me, exposure. Say it, exposure. I said, Lord, thank you that it happened with just three or four people. When I went back, I sat down on my laptop. I browsed everything about table etiquette, kinds of food, how to behave, courses of meal and everything. Because I'm making way for the blessing. You know, the more you rise, the more you implicate yourself. People expect that you should have done certain homeworks. So they just... Some of you will get somewhere. You enter someone's house. You just see two toilets. You just think it's for you to choose anyone. You don't know what it's for. Don't pretend you didn't have it. Ask questions. Not just, ah, ah, the type in our house is green. You don't know what it's for. Say after me, exposure. Don't be ashamed. Say exposure. 
Many of you, when you came into this school, ladies, you know what you used to wrap around yourself. You didn't know that the society was this sensitive. You just wrap everything and put your head around. But with time, you began to study other people. You say, ah, this is not good for me. And what happened? It was a secret exposure. You didn't tell anybody. The first day you cooked, you ate it alone. All your friends were saying, Kai, you tried, oh, this is nice. Everybody left you and your food there. For some of you, from that time till now, you have been living in deceit. May God take you to see somebody's food that will provoke you not to rest till you go for catering. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say after me, exposure. Prepare. Look up, please. I'm teaching you how to adopt the spirit of excellence. You prepare. Sir, let me have this cup. Why did they do this? How many of you know? Don't pretend. How many of you know why this was done? You've never cared to ask? Why did, when did they start doing this? Hallelujah. One day now, you now say you want to be a virtuous lady. They'll say, sister, please come. There are some white people who just came from somewhere. And I hear you attend Koinonia. You, you are a disciplined lady. I mean, all the rest run around. Please help us. Just set the table and make sure you make everything. And you are sweating around. Set the table. Oh, God. The Bible says you are the one who will do it. Now I'm the one who is doing it. Thank you, sir. And you disgrace... You disgrace yourself and your family. Hallelujah. Many of you keep disgracing yourselves and disgracing people. You know why? Shame will never live your life until you adopt the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. You saw that a new design came out. You didn't ask all the questions how they wear it. You went, your money only reached for one part of the dressing. You carried it, wore it, and you were just coming around and smiling, looking at yourself, almost hitting yourself. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. It's not your fault. You came from the village. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You have been lying as if you are living in Ikoi, Lagos. Humble yourself. Embrace the exposure and leave that realm. Leave that realm. They bring something for you. You don't know whether it's rice or it's chicken. And it's just keep quiet. You say, ah, but uh, there's turkey. They say, no, no, it's not turkey. It's, it's fish. You say, ah, I forgot. See me again. Now, you are tongue talking. You are tongue talking. You are anointed. Do you think if I'm a director and I want to employ you, I will employ you to go and disgrace my company? No way. No way. And you say, somebody in your village. Whereas somebody who is not born again, not filled with the Holy Spirit, but pays the price to learn some things. You are going for a job interview. You are, you are dressing as if you are going to watch football. You are seeing everybody dressing smart. And you will just throw, say, the most important thing is the anointing I have. You enter the place, they say, why are you like this? This is how you want to become a staff? Are you aware this is a bank? Or this is an insurance company? You say, yes, I'm aware. You are, you are now getting arrogant because you think you are standing in front of Koinonia. You just imagine that it's your church. What is all this now? They've taught you positive confession. You are now shouting. The people say, please, this way. Walk out of this place. We don't like this kind of people. Walk out of this place. Hallelujah. Many of you do not want to train yourself. You don't want to build yourself. You have been taught that knowledge is inferior. The most important thing is just the anointing. I'm teaching you today that excellence will take you out of where you are into a world that you have never imagined. Please let's hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. So you need what? Say, Lord, expose me. It could be an illumination in the world that you have never seen. And God exposes you. It could be a program. It could be whatever 
that opens you up. Exposure. This is a beautiful design by our decorations department. Appreciate them. Exposure. Because when you become a champion, you will know how to celebrate people. Appreciate them, please. Hallelujah. You go for a meeting somewhere, they say, this is a professor. Everybody is clapping you. You are sitting down. They'll say, sorry, please, can you? They will lead you outside as if they want to ask you a question and close the door. They are videotaping it. They want to show the world that there is a way. See, listen, it's called the law of protocol. Protocol. Learn these things. Learn it. Learn it. Learn it. Don't say it does not matter. How old are you that you are saying it does not matter? Those who have been practicing it have lived by it. I hope you are receiving something tonight. I hope you are not just laughing. Because me, I'm serious about what I'm saying. It must not be a negative exposure. There are negative exposures. For instance, you see a lady who is a prostitute, dresses one kind. And she comes and you are there seated. And many guys are just coming. You say, all right. So this is what guys want. That's it. You go back. You know how Nigerian films are. The next thing they show, the villager girl just comes out. Say, how do I look? They say, this is it. And then the men begin to come. That's negative exposure. Positive exposure will inspire you. Are you listening to me? It won't kill your destiny. It will inspire you. Many of you are mentoring the lives of people who are not born again. They are not serious. They are not using principles that are consistent with the word of God. You will become like them and you will go to hell at the end. So stop that. Everything we are discussing has to be within the jurisdiction of the principles of the kingdom. So number one, you need exposure. Number two, exposure will create a need in you. To rise higher and this leads to the next point determination because of the pain of the embarrassment you had you will vow a vow that nobody needs to supervise you tell yourself it will never happen again i was told one day that there are some guys young guys are like claiming as in this kind you know young guys when they see an elderly woman they like claiming look i'm responsible i can take care of your daughter and so the, the car had a problem and they asked them, the woman was inside and they wanted to jumpstart it. So the guys were pushing. The woman was tired. She said, ah, you poor young men, sorry, some of you enter and none of them could drive. And they had been behaving as in, we are ready to take care of your daughter. The woman said, confidently, say, please, enter and help me, you know, an old woman I've tried. And the guys were sweating there. Yeah. Oh boy, you shall be drive the other one. said, no, you go. If I ask you why can't why can't you drive? You say because a car has not come. That's called mediocrity. Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. Sister, what can you cook? Jollof rice and boiled yam. What else? Nothing else. Who do you want to marry? Pastor. And kill him. And kill him. What if he fasts for seven days? That's what you plan to give him? And the guy has not come and said, Lord, I'm warning you now. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Stop warning God. Get back. Create exposure. And have a determination to move ahead. You have a restaurant. Nobody has come to eat. You didn't ask why. You went for prayer. Now they prayed for you. Nothing changed. Is the rice that is overnight by 1 p.m. You are still selling yesterday's rice. I will never come and eat in your restaurant. Whether you are a member of Koinonia, it doesn't matter what department you are functioning. I won't come and eat because I have only one body and I need to take care of it. If you are not ready to step up and then we say we are looking for caterers to cook for the ministers, you say I'm available. Available. Music artist. I was listening to a lady today. Top sticks, they call her. Ah, I put my hand on my head. Do you know her? How many of you know her? Yet you see, I'm a drummer. 
Say, I saw myself in the dream playing drums. Don't just let dreams deceive you. It takes action to bring what you have seen in the realm of the spirit to manifest in this realm. Am I challenging you? I watched this lady. I put my hand on my head. I wanted us to play it. It would have challenged you, sisters. There is no excellent person who is not prosperous and fulfilled because it would defy barriers. The same way some people are begging for jobs. Certain people, see, I learned a lesson in life. I'm still coming back for banks. Banks, I'm coming back for you in the future. I applied for a loan in 2008. The banks did this. They looked at me, looked at me, sized me out, and drove me out. I said, no problem. A day will come. It will be members of Koinonia that will have that bank. That, that, that was no Koinonia then, E and I. When they have it, I can walk in. There's what we call human capital, not land. You are the capital. So I said, if I don't have land, I will become the capital. Get knowledge. Get wisdom. Become equal to a nation, one man. Pastor Tunde Bakare was preaching. A bank abroad called him and they were begging him. They said, please collect a loan of $10 million. They were begging him. He said, what for? He said, please just take it. They said, because they are afraid of the recession. So they are looking for human beings that control influence. So that they will collect loans. So it can keep the bank stable. Are you listening to me? So people like Adeboy and the rest now. If he comes for loan, he is equal. Look at Redeem. Can they make one bank? Or how many banks? So they'll say, please, Papa, collect money from us. Some of us are begging and say, give us money. Say, wait, wait. Uh, you have to present this and that. I said, no problem. It's not your fault. I don't have land, but I can have what? I said, I'm coming. This is the right thing you will do this thing for. This one that you do. I'm coming back. And I said, a day will come. On my table will be many offers from banks. I said, the problem is that we are blessed. Let me just pray for you. Is it not increase you want? Oh, it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. I found my way to the top. It will happen. It will happen. A day will come. I will ask. See, some of you one day will sit down. If you take what I'm saying serious. You say, mommy, do you want a bungalow? Matuashimolo, hog bread in this area. The road you follow to come for Koinonia. He put bread on his head. Buy bread. Buy bread. He was hogging it. Some of our parents were laughing at him. Now, he's a world champion. What takes a man from a bread? He came to Zaria. He has a house. He still has a house there. When he came in, he said they should build the house. And in 30 days, they completed it. Plus polishing. Why wouldn't they build it when the money is there? Some of our parents have been building since 1991. Just four bedroom flat. Till today, we have not completed it. Everybody you thought was stopping the building has died. Yet the building has not increased. Now, let's visit that word I wrote. Change. Change. Help us, Holy Spirit. Change. Remember the word? Let's visit it today. When you are determined to succeed, that means you are determined to change some things about your life. The difference between the rich and the poor is not money. It's their habits, their mindsets. The difference between those that God uses mightily and those who grumble and criticize and scrabble out over others is their mindset. And I want you to live where you are today and rise. There's always backbiting. There's nothing called frontbiting. Backbiting is for those who are far behind, who are looking for an excuse for why they are where they are. Change. Listen. There are a few things I've seen that happen to people every time you hear the word like this. 
I wrote reactions that for own change. Number one, refusal or denial or indifference about your present situation. That means why you need to remain there. There are many of us, when you hear a word like this, it will embarrass you, it will sting your ego. That's what is happening to many of us. You are angry, you wish you can flog me. That's why you are not sitting here. And now you are just saying, oh God, this guy, why is he saying this thing now? There are many people who hear messages like this and get angry. They don't know why they are angry. They think they are angry at the man of God. They are not angry at the man of God. It's a reaction that is compelling change. Because when you hear a message like that, it rattles you. And you can either be meek and broken or you can stand and give excuses and say, okay, forget it, Jare. So the first thing people do when they are confronted with change is to refuse it. They try to give excuses. They try to be indifferent and say, well, I've had the time will tell who is right. Me, I will keep my prayer. I won't let anybody preach any nonsense. Time will tell. <laughs> you better repent now. You don't need to wait till the future. Just look. Look at two people. One who looks like you and one who looks like what we are preaching. Project them and see what is happening to their lives. Experience. People say it's the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Be wise enough and look at other people. For instance, our family members. I know families that conduct vigils every Thursday and Friday in their house. They wake everybody. Some of your families do that. The moment you see people waking, know that your father is under pressure. Something is wrong. Wake up and come out. We have a problem and you are sleeping there. Come out. And you are praying and you are sleeping. You are saying, Lord, is this really the solution to this problem? Because your father cannot sleep. You will sleep too. Growing up, when my father is annoyed, everybody must partake of that annoyance directly. For something very small like keeping this Bible here. You say, is this where it's supposed to be? You know that the real thing is not the Bible. There's, it's a cumulative of something. You watch your friend on news. You just start getting angry. And see all these people. They now pretend as if they don't know us. The truth is he has forgotten about you. Let me just tell you the truth. Because they don't look back. Leaders look forward. So if you ever want people to remember you, come forward. Many of you are there angry. They don't remember us. Uh -uh. You want them to just turn back like that? So that they will fail and then you say, Hey, I knew it won't last. That's indifference. If it works well, you say, I knew. It's just that I didn't say it. If it fails, you say, Shebi, I, I told you I'd be. Indifference. <laughs> After you refuse then it leads to anger and embarrassment. That's the second stage. Because right now you are, that anger and embarrassment is a confrontation in your heart. You are knowing, you are knowing right now that this is true. I need to change. So you are either getting angry at the vessel or you are getting angry at your situation. Number three, the moment you finally settle it, that where I am is not good enough. What happens? The third thing is you begin to negotiate for cheap routes so that you escape fast, so that people will not know. Cheap routes. Unfortunately, there are no cheap routes in life. It's only in advertisement. I have one, this thing on my phone. It said, marriage, instant, no dues. So he wrote, he said, there's no marriage, instant, no dues. It's in America, they do that. Oh, I love you. You love me. Let's marry. They just get one priest from somewhere. Just comes out from somewhere and just join the people. Two weeks later, you look at them and say, How are you? Say, I'm not doing it again. He doesn't love me. Oh. I don't love you. What, did, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? When your mother was getting married in the village, she knew she was in for it. She was determined to make it work. We are not touching those areas now. Ah, one day we'll talk about it. You've not heard me preach about it for a long time. I went to Delta and when they were picking me, 
for the state conference from my hotel room. The two guys were arguing. They said, sir, want to find out your opinion about marriage. I said, ah, don't start. Because I said, you people don't want to know my opinion. My opinion about many things is always causing trouble. So a day will come, we'll share that one. Praise God. I'm sure that day some of you will just stand up and say, just walk away. <laughs> Negotiating for cheap alternatives. Cheap alternatives. If that does not work, then you come to terms with the fact that change is inevitable. In other words, you cannot hide it. You may cry about it. You may feel embarrassed about it. But you have to change. At that point, it will bring you to a point where you are humble. And you will receive and say, okay, I'm wrong. I need to change. Listen, do you know how hard it is for people to accept change in their lives? Because change means you have to admit that what you know is not enough. That's why humility is the fastest tool to receive change. Once you are humble, you can embrace change. Hallelujah. Have you seen someone in class who bragged about one test? The guy bragged and said, if I don't pass, change my name. And then, maybe it's just one question. So you either get 10 over 10 or 0. And they were calling the names of those who are 10 over 10 and his name was not there. And then the guy just sat down and everybody's looking at him. And the guy is trying to manage multiple pressures, not knowing what to do. And then they say, who can help us solve it? And then the guy wants to quickly stand up and go and solve it. He said, oh, I know the right thing. And when he stands up, he says, no, 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 you got 0, please sit down. They will keep embarrassing you till you come to a point where you say, all right, I am a brilliant student, but I didn't get this right. See, have meekness and humility. It will help you embrace change. Are you listening to me? Meekness and what? Humility. There are people today in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has opened them up to a revelation. But changing it may mean changing the ideology of the ministry. They would rather remain like that than to contend for truth. Is that true? Some of your churches are like that. The founders, the overseers, whoever, God has given them encounters and are saying this gospel you are preaching, you need to change it. Something is wrong. And they look at the reputation they have built for decades and say, Kai, if I change this thing now, it's as good as dying. Hallelujah. Or your father beats your mother. Two of them do and go. And they go to church. And then a man of God with big mouth like me comes and says, there are men in this place. You beat your wife this morning before coming. And he's sitting down. Say, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. And you see your father struggling with change. Battling with change. Doing suddenly like he's sending a text message. Or God, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. Just battling. That's why I taught you these virtues last week. I'm sorry. Remember? Please. What else? Thank you. You came for koinonia and you matched somebody. The person says, sister, you matched me. You just turn and look at him and say, is it where they keep Bibles? Why don't you change? Change is very hard. This is what kept, this is what kept Nitel out of the way. If your father works in Nitel, I'm sorry. But this is what took them out. The ability to embrace change will always keep you in season. Hallelujah. Many people have refused to change. And now they are victims. Let's hurry up. Number three. All those things I've said are number two. To achieve excellence in life, one, you need exposure. Two, determination to succeed. That's where we spoke about change. Number three, set goals. Set goals on what you want to become like. Set a high standard. If you tell me you want to become excellent, I'll say like who or what. Give me a reference. You must have a reference. A reference is someone or something that have become close or equal to what you want to become like. You must have somebody or somewhere you are looking up to. Set a very high standard. 
Set a clear standard. I want to be an entrepreneur. What kind? Like who? Call the name of one person who can give us a portrait of what you want to become like. Those in the world know that. Ask them who is your role model. They just say Timaya. Ask a small child. I mean, at least they have an idea. You know what that means? Go to their rooms and all you see is Timaya's tapes and everything. Because they want to follow the principles he followed to get there. Ask believers. You say you are an artist. Say wonderful. So tell me three people that really inspire you that you want to become like. Say me, oh. The way I do my things, even me, I'm not sure. We just keep moving. You will never, never become the kind of figure that you are seeing. I assure you. I assure you. Unfortunately, and I must say this now. Many pastors have taught people that if I am your pastor or I am your spiritual father, I'm the only one you should listen to. Don't listen to anybody. Don't take anybody. Question. You want to become a media giant. Your pastor is only a preacher. How is he going to mentor you into that? He can guide you. He can instruct you. He can advise you. But you need to find a mentor along the area that God is taking you to. This is the message they don't preach in church. Because people always think, oh, if you are my son or you are my daughter, it means your offering is coming to me alone. Get that junk out of the church. That's what is keeping people where they are. He looks popular, but he did not come from God. He doesn't produce successful people. Hmm. You want to own an airline. Like which one? You don't know. I assure you, you won't arrive. I watched one cartoon growing up called Alice in Wonderland. Fantasies that happen in one Wonderland. That's how many people are living. <laughs> you ask them, they, start, they even close their eyes when they are telling you. You won't get there. Look at me. I want to ask two people randomly. Brother, stand up. You, stand up. What do you want to become in life? Don't shout it. Come and tell me. Don't, you don't need to tell everybody none of their business. Alright, this is why you are here. May God bless you for your honesty. Are you seeing that? He said an answer that many of you will not have courage to say. Because you sit down and act like you know. How about you, sir? Okay. I want to be a solution. To you want to be a solution to the world? Ick. No, no, don't laugh. Hold on, this is a school. You want to be a solution to the world. That's wonderful. What solution? A medical doctor is a solution. A carpenter is a solution. A mechanic is a solution. A banker is a solution. In what area? Biochemistry. In biochemistry. So you want to take that field. God bless you. You see now that... what You see what you are receiving in this place? Guidance. So go and find a God-fearing biochemist. Are you listening to me? How do you get that? Go and Google it. Christian professional biochemists, look for them. You find a particular biochemist. He has probably written books. He probably has videos on YouTube. Go to engineering faculty in the night. Pay the price and download it and start listening. You will get their mindsets. Before you know it, you will rise above ABU. Rise above Zaria. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I, I never will be limited with this environment. Hallelujah. Are you learning something now? So, write it. Find somebody. Say, who do you want to become? Say, an apostle. Like who? What, is it God, what did God tell you? You are not clear. Go back. Stop going out. Go back to the secret place. There are questions to ask. But you left an incomplete session and you got up and you are running. There are many ministries today. Ask me what every time we hold leadership meetings, whether ministers meeting, whether... Um, um, HODs or ESCOs or whatever the f we discuss it I tell them why this ministry exists in one sentence I can tell you what we are here to do periodically I remind all the leaders we are not existing to do everything there are many preachers go and ask them why did you start your church say well an angel appeared it was on the 20th why did you start your church Say the angel told me, he said, now this day I have commissioned. Why did you start your church? 
Little wonder people are committed in your church. They come and go because there is no definition of vision. They don't know what they are going to become. Why did you start your church? Now you started a prayer group. Even if it started supernaturally, eventually you go and ask God. He said, now Lord, people are coming in this prayer group. Where are we going to? You are just praying with a sister. Praying with a sister. Where are you going to? Do you like her? Are you starting the ministry together? Are you prayer partners? Vision! Define it. We be praying every day and the sister is saying, so what's the next instruction God is giving? You are saying, let's just keep praying. Where are you going? Nobody follows a leader that does not have conviction and where you are going. I assure you. So set goals. Set goals. In the area of finances, there are people that I model their lives. In the area of ministry, there are people I model their lives. In the area of leadership, there are people I plan to be higher. When you go to my place, you see above my television, I put my picture there. People think it's just for entertainment. No, it's prophetic. Because I'm seeing it, I'm saying whatever I see on this television, the hand of God will take me above it. And then you see books there. Some of you, when we get there, it's just dreams you write. Wishes, useless wishes that may never come to pass. The only goal you have is the kind of man you want to marry. That's good, but that's not enough. You even draw the person. His eyelashes must be wide and rich here. Apply that same principle for your life and destiny. Or the brother, she must be this, me, I won't take anything. Joshua Selman has taught us excellence. I won't take anything. Then you too, you better work to match the excellence you want. There are many brothers here. You want a beautiful sister. Every time you come, you just look at her. Just turn, worship team. You are just looking. You are not organized. You are not well behaved. You are not well cultured. You are not disciplined. You have no vision. You are not doing anything about your life. They say, who do you want? One day you even meet your friend and say, Guy, I've been thinking about something. You better stop thinking. You better stop thinking. Quick! And, and get to what you are doing. Better stop thinking. Don't punish your mind for nothing. Stop thinking. First things first. Stop thinking. Clarity. Say after me, I receive grace to set definite goals for my life. Write a quick assignment you do. Write three Go and look for three people that represent the areas. They must be believers. They must be believers. Three people that give a picture of what you know God wants you to do. Whether in ministry, not very high. Raise your standard high. If you want to own a TV ministry, like which one? For instance, you can say like TBN, like God TV, like KICC, for instance. You say, God has told me this, my hand will count money. There's one song. You see this, my hand, you. Many people even count it. It go count dollars. You would dance that thing and never count any dollar. It's wonderful. Do the motions of the church, motivate yourself. But after that, go and sit down. You didn't even mention Naira, mention dollars. Hallelujah. Set a standard. When I look at ministry, there are people that inspire me. I read their books. It doesn't mean you will receive everything. There will be excesses here and there in their lives. Jump all those things and concentrate on what you can get. Are you listening to me? There are many people whose mindsets in certain areas I don't quite agree with. Stop criticizing. Just get what you can get and go. Hallelujah. Set goals. So that you can know when you set goals, you must begin to put pressure on yourself to achieve those goals. Don't just set blind goals. Set goals. 
there are ministries that we as a ministry I've, I've taught I carried the heads of department the ministers and we went to Koza Abuja why because I love and I respect their excellence do you know it takes a lot of humility to do that because I'm not failing in ministry I know I'm anointed but you must humble yourself I'm saying it openly because it's not a thing to hide there are many ministers that listen to my messages and just stand up and pretend they I know it I see it sometimes in visions see celebrate greatness when you enter its presence there are people who bless my life I don't hide it and we took all the leaders and we went to Koza we went in the morning we sat down there our head of department of different departments went to their head of departments and they were learning don't ask questions why we are excellent and this is not this is old wine I'm telling you this is old wine you wait and see what God is doing they have adopted principles for instance I know that Ilorin and Ibadan is the place of music people is that true some of you musicians don't even know you think it's, it's Samaru that's the problem come he was over at my place today and I was doing discussions with him it was him that told me about the lady how many of you like his singing Ilorin people again you see that and I was I was asking him a question I said tell me about the music in Ilorin and he said ah the people there most of them like money 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 but they are excellent they are competent I said ah I said tell me more and I was just listening he said tell me more I said all right God bless you every time I challenge the decoration department they don't just bring some of these designs off heart they sit down and look at certain things the protocol almost every department and if you're a head of department here and you don't have an idea of any ministry that does your department and an idea of a picture it means you are misleading your people you do anything you want to do today you do thank god there are ministers there to supervise you when you are going out of course it's our job to bring you back question who inspires you yourself that's why you are still where you are you are the only one who inspires yourself you don't have any figure that inspires you out of the many mentors in my life my greatest mentor is Jesus Christ and I no 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 I know many of you will not Jesus inspires me boy when I study the Bible sometimes I just put it on my head I say Baba Jesus I just laugh I mean this guy was something else he inspires me who inspires you show me the person that inspires you and I'll tell you why you are in your life for many of us we are surrounded by people who are failures in life it doesn't mean you should hate them but they cannot be your role models it's out of pity many of us look up to some people i won't let a failure inspire me i won't criticize him i will love him but i know he will not help me to get where i want to go to there are many of you who are friends with people who don't inspire you it's just out of pity we have been there since secondary school you want to read after you read for two hours verse is it i beg jare jesus is coming soon you say not true you just close your book and you keep getting zeros 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 and you'll be wondering zeros the best student in your class is reading you go and sleep and come back and still see the person reading because every time he's tired he sees did you have that kind of thing in secondary school where you have the best two students when somebody's tired he looks at the person who took first last semester see i'm not going anywhere we must read together provoke one another i'm not teaching you to have a competitive spirit but you must who challenges you i don't mean makes you envious challenges you i taught the worship team one time i told them i said acknowledge those who are better than you hallelujah acknowledge it when you look and say selena can hold this camera if i hold this camera and you watch the video you will stone me hallelujah I wasn't trained to do it when they were being trained I was doing something else so I'm not that competent so if I come and see Selena and say oh, is it not this simple thing mm -mm. celebrate greatness when you see it hallelujah you will now see these worship people and say ah, ah 
I thought this lady is a new lady. She came, ah, ah, worship team have accepted her. They are trying, no? Why didn't they take you? You see, people have this negative, critical spirit. Hallelujah. Why are the protocol people standing and wearing white? Can't they just dress anyhow? Don't communicate your frustrations looking at things around. Calm down, get the word and change. Let me tell you something. 95% of people who criticize only criticize because they desire to be in that position that they are criticizing. It's a bad spirit in Nigeria. They've been insulting good luck Jonathan and they've been doing a lot of things. People have been swearing, if we see you, kill. he has been in Meduguri and Yola for the past two days. Nobody did anything. Everybody was shouting, hey, the same people. What are we saying? Who is deceiving who? Four, pay the price for new information. You need new information to rise to a new level. You need new information. What you have is good, but it's not enough. Hear me. You are a book writer. You wrote your book. It's only you and your family members that know. That tells you that your information is insufficient. You launched it in your church. They piled the book for you there. Now you are giving it as donation because nobody will buy it. You were not ready. You just followed one foolish motivation that you cannot explain and wrote books that don't have head and sense. Later on, after two years, you read them and saw nonsense that you wrote. Principles that don't work. They are not even work. The best time to begin to bring people into some things is when you become the epistle of your message. At that point, nobody can contend it. If I tell you that spitting on people's face is bringing miracles, I tell you the truth, if I can prove it, you will be surprised to see how people will believe it. There are many people talking things they cannot prove. I learned this early enough. So I made sure that I'm the guinea pig. There are many things today I'm saying. You people are believing it only because you have seen we have become epistles of some of these things to a measure. Otherwise you will not believe it. Pay the price for new information. Get books. Get books. The Bible says buy the truth. Borrow vessels. You may not borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. Get books. Oh God, Jordan is here. There are books outside, I believe. Buy them. Buy books. Study. Go for knowledge. Respect knowledge. Respect knowledge. Intellect is not everything. But I'm telling you, respect the power of a transformed mind. Respect knowledge. Don't criticize it. Respect knowledge. Go for new information. Meet people who know. Humble yourself. Get tapes. Koinonia messages are here. Many of you have been suffering certain things that the solution has been preached in these messages. Listen to it. Again and again. Sit down with and tips and challenge yourself that you are going to change your life not just sermons books by people who have proven track record number five apply these principles diligently apply them the end of every knowledge is application whatever you do not apply cannot help you I'm telling you this many of us know so many things but we refuse to apply them. The most dangerous thing that can happen to a man is to have knowledge without application. There are many people holding all kinds of seminars around Nigeria. Success motivation. And you see the person comes rickety, not motivated, bad, terrible, battered, and he just drops and says, there are three Ds. Determination, dedication, diligence. Look at the person who is talking. Say you must be determined. This guy is weary already. There were four people who came. He thought hundred people would come. Say determination, diligence. 
and the person is already weary, go back to your secret place. Apply the new information diligently. Number six, be disciplined and consistent in practicing the new principles. Many people lack discipline. It takes discipline to keep practicing these principles. Even if the result is not showing now, you have been tightened. The result is not showing now. You've been reading books that continue, continue, don't stop. Pastor Chris will say, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Let me add to it. Keep doing it. Don't stop doing it. No matter what the, you are praying every day, you are studying your Bible, you are reading books on leadership, you are fine-tuning, you believe that you are going to have one of the biggest catering firm in Nigeria. Now you have certain people who are some of the top caterers. You are following them and you are taking it diligent. You are practicing some principles. It looks like it's not working. Continue. Give yourself wholly to them. I promise you, opportunity will come and your preparation will more than pay for it. Hallelujah. Be consistent. Be disciplined. Many of us are not disciplined. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent prayer life. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent word life. Because sometimes you are tired. Sometimes when is my time to follow materials on leadership and all of these things? I'm tired. I'm really tired. Physically exhausted. I may have spent the whole day counseling. But sometimes when I lie down, I remember that I have people to lead. I think about you. And it inspires me. I get up. Sometimes I literally crawl. I'm telling you with my knees. I put on my laptop. I said, eyes, you can sleep. But my head, stay awake. And I keep following it. I just get a drink or something. And I force myself. Listen, you must let your body know it's not in control of your destiny. Be consistent. Be disciplined. It's your time to study. You are studying a book. Your friend says, come. There's one, there's one uh, powerful program. Or one man of God has come to town. Wonderful. As great as that is. Ask yourself a question. Is the program you are going to, going to help you to achieve your vision? If it will not, you better sit down and continue doing what you are doing. Be consistent. Say, I receive grace to be disciplined. Discipline is doing the same thing whether the condition is favorable or not. That's discipline. Force yourself. Constrain yourself. My body is already used to me. I can come back from a trip. When I come back from a trip, I know that it's time to do some things. I'm tired and I'm exhausted. I rest though. Don't get me wrong. I have days that I pay that debt, but I pay it at the right time. When I need to do something, my body is not going to stop me. There are many of you, you have slept away your destiny. You have slept away a realm that you would have got to. You sleep as if it's a demonic attack. The moment you hold the book, you are drowsy. But when you are gisting, when you are lying, haba. Number eight, never give up. Never give up give up. We are going to pray right now. Never give up. Never. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. Champions are those who survive what others cannot survive. Never give up. Say after me, I'll never give up. Never give up. I'm imparting this word in someone's spirit tonight. Never give up. Those who succeed in life are those who ride against the odd. Samson's eyes was removed, but he still held on to the pillars. He said it's not too late. I'm speaking to someone tonight. The devil has spoken to you. Hear me, some of you are outside and you've written certain exams and the devil is telling you your life is over. I bring you a prophetic word. Never give up. I don't care what happened. 
what, what your CGPA is. Uh, some of you may have made costly mistakes and you've lost certain things. You were not born again. You slept around. Whatever it is, never give up. You can always start again. Listen. The problem in life is not how fast or slow you are moving. Is that you are not moving at all. That's when it becomes a problem. Because in the ark of Noah, the cheetah entered and the snail too got into the ark. No matter how slow, tell yourself I will continue. Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. For if your strength fails you in the day of battle, the Bible says your strength. I've read the story of CEOs of companies. Oh, you cannot imagine what those people have gone through. I've read the story of preachers that have mega churches. You cannot imagine the persecutions that this man survived. There is nothing you are going through in your life that you cannot conquer if you can keep at it. Many, many of our fathers, they would have been successful businessmen today if they did not give up. They started a business together with their friends. On the way, what happened? Maybe the tanker capsized. And they lost the foil. And the friend said, I'll continue. Now he owns an oil well. And your father is coming to beg him. And say, Amos, remember. I want to take you out of the life of a beggar. And make you a leader and a champion forever. And I curse every pronouncement upon your life. I curse every tongue. Kapaka satala kapaya. I curse everything that we want to stop you from sharing this word tonight and rising into a glorious destiny. I call your spirit into a higher level of grace. I call your spirit into a higher level of glory. I prophesy and I speak according to the measure of grace that God has granted. You will rise from where you are in the name of Jesus. Academically, I call you rise above and beyond this level. dominion listen there is fulfillment when you embrace a life of excellence when you refuse to stop where you are where you refuse to stop many of you may need to go and take some extra courses to prepare you for where god is taking you many of you will need to get some books go to catering school go to media schools many of you may need to follow the buy magazines buy what will help you Go for knowledge. There's no time to waste. Your generation is waiting. Buy tapes of musicians. Buy tapes of drummers. Bass guitarists. Get it. I'm telling you, get it. It will change your life. Stop playing around with your destiny. Get it. I'm telling you this from the depth of my heart. You will never be a failure if you follow these principles. Rise up on your feet and let's Lift your hands and bless the Lord. And say, I found my way out of mediocrity in life. I found my way. Lift your hands inside and outside. Say, Lord, thank you for your word. I found my way. I'm a champion. My background notwithstanding. My present situation notwithstanding. Pray. Say, I go for knowledge. I go for knowledge. I'm excellent in everything that I do. I'm excellent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So adopt that spirit of excellence. Go back to your room. Go and wash all those dirty and scattered plates that you have left for months, for weeks. Hallelujah. No, I need to talk to you. Hallelujah. There are guys, you wear inner shirts, inner wears for weeks for months you don't wash it you don't care you carry one shirt is smelling sweaty adopt the spirit of excellence get out of that mindset your singlet is brown pack it and throw it and buy another one you have been buying chocolate 150 naira buy polish for your shoe get an iron press your clothes well if your bab in bab well if you're leaving your hair, I trim it well. Be smart. 
be smart behave like a leader don't be roaming around laughing anyhow no behave yourself don't buy something and be eating on the road you are eating granite you are eating this you eat something and you just throw it on the road behave as if you know that god is taking you far it's a spirit of excellence don't keep your room unkept untidy everything is not going well you are just happy your notebooks are torn get something and fix it up you buy your books everything is torn your bed sheet is dirty you are looking at it you can't wash it you can't clean it you're waiting for somebody to do it polish your shoe take your time be smart You may not have money to change your hair. But can't you comb it? Comb it. Look nice. When you want to cook food and give somebody, prepare it, package it well. Adopt the spirit of excellence in everything you do. When you want to greet people, take out time and greet them well. Greet like a leader. Don't greet like a failure. Don't join people in empty talks. Profitless talks. That's the realm of mediocre. Rise to where things are happening. Hallelujah. Finally pray and say, Lord, help me. Help me. Let me take this word seriously. Say, Lord, help me. Challenge me. Let me mix this word with faith. I receive grace to be a practitioner of this word. I'm not teaching you to criticize others. Your mindset has been changed tonight. So you must approach others with love. Make sure you approach others who don't know what you know with love. Teach them and help them. Don't criticize others because you have risen higher than them. Hallelujah. The first way out of mediocrity in life is to give your heart to the Lord. Now hear me, you are here inside and outside. And you've not made a genuine decision for Jesus Christ. God has sent us here to help you. There's no reason to be ashamed. There's no reason to be afraid. Or you've once given your heart to the Lord. But you found yourself derailing in the path of the Lord. Right now wherever you are, please leave your seat and confidently walk up here. Leave your seat and come out inside and outside. If God is speaking to you, I'd like you to leave your seat. Welcome home. The Lord is keep clapping for them. They are coming. God bless you. Thank you for your boldness bless you brother your life will never be the same are there any more people inside and outside one minute i will wait for you one minute i will wait for you is there any other person god is speaking to you it's time to make it right with jesus god bless you my sister appreciate them as they come appreciate them as they come it's a new life for you god bless you thank you we do not condemn you. We love you. We have a message that works. The real gospel that works. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and my sister. Thank you for coming. I need you to know your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand boldly and pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you, unable to help myself. But tonight... I make Jesus Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit from today. I'm a changed person. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. I denounce sin and Satan and I receive grace to run this race. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget 
to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye